Oh, hello. Um, sorry to bother you. Is that the Jehovah's Witness services in in Whitby? Yeah, just have a second. Thank you. Yeah, say that again. Sorry, what was that? Yes, um, I'm through. Uh, your Jehovah's Witnesses in Whitby. That's quite correct. Yeah. Ah, right. I've got one of your books, and I've been reading it during the lockdown. Oh, um, yes. Uh, very interesting, but I'm not happy about the resurrection. It seems to say on page 46 that Jesus, the Father, resurrected Jesus back to life as a spirit, as a spirit creature, and I'm, I'm a bit shocked about that. Um, it might not be convenient to speak at the moment for you. I mean, I don't know if you're free. Um, I don't want to take up your valuable time, but it's could somebody right, help? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, are you in Whitby then? No, no, I'm I'm a little way outside. I'm quite some way outside. Right, okay, right. Yes. Um yeah, we yeah, we, we um what what was the chapter you were looking at? Well it, it was page forty six. Let me just get it. Sorry, I've got the creakiest. I'm lying on my bed. I've got the creakiest bed in the world. It's like Dracula's coffin. <laughs> Being in Whitby, that should uh, ring some bells with you, didn't it? Because they said he landed there. Um, right. Um, page 46, chapter 4. However, on the third day after Jesus died, his heavenly father resurrected him back to spirit life. That's correct. Um, but I thought Jesus rose in a physical body. At least when I attended church, that's what we were taught. Right, I gave okay. up ten. I gave up ten years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, for instance, First Timothy chapter two verse five: There is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's right. That's written in the present tense. Paul's writing about AD sixty, about thirty years after the resurrection. He's not writing in the past tense. He doesn't say he was the man Christ Jesus. He says he is the man Christ Jesus. So writing about the late 50s, AD 60, when Paul wrote to Timothy, 30 years after the resurrection, he refers to Christ as a man, anthropos. I've looked up the word for man. It's anthropos in Greek. And he calls him the man Christ Jesus. So wouldn't I be correct in assuming that Christ rose from the grave as a man? Um, let's have a look. It's very difficult to sort of discuss a point that's just sort of raised on the phone, really. Yeah, um, of course. Need, where, whereabouts are you exactly? Um, oh, are, you, are you in the Whitby area? I'm not having there? people. I'm not having people visit me. No, I'm some way outside. We, I'm some way away yeah, from you. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. Um, obviously, that would be breaking the law. Um, so there's no way we would do that. Are, are you sort of? Are you? But are you sort of based um, um, in another part of the country completely, or are you, you know, you say you're just outside of Whitby? I'm, qu I'm, a, I'm, I'm quite some long way away from you, yes. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a little difficult to sort of, because I can't pin down exactly where, you know, exactly what you're, what you're discussing from whichever scripture or particular... First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, written in the present tense about AD 60 yeah. by Paul to Timothy, and the word for man is anthropos. The one in God and men, a man, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's correct. That's what it says. Yeah. So he rose as a man. Well, he was resurrected as a spirit creature uh, when he died, because he came back, didn't he? When he, he died, he went to heaven. Uh, and then, and then he appeared again to the disciples. Came down, appeared, and then resurrected uh, as a spirit creature. But he died as a man. I mean, there's no um, verse that says he resurrected as a spirit creature, unless you can show me. It says here in First Timothy chapter two, verse five, that he is a man. So, yeah. writing it in AD sixty, we know that Christ was a man. There's no verse that yeah. says there's one mediator between God and men, the spirit but, creature, Christ Jesus, yeah. or the archangel Michael. But he's he was a man when he died, obviously. He was, he was a man when he served yeah. his father on the earth. Yes. And he ministered. First Peter 3.18 says, For 
Christ died once for all time for sin, the righteous person for unrighteous ones. In and made alive by the Spirit, spirit. yeah. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Yeah, so the Holy Spirit raised him. He's made alive by the Spirit, my New King James Bible says. So the Holy Spirit raised him. It doesn't say he was raised as a spirit. There's, there's no Bible verse which says that, is, is there? He was, he was raised by his father, wasn't he? By, by his, his father who, who, who raised him to, to heaven. Well, father's, father's Son and Holy Spirit, Spirit resurrected Christ. Christ resurrected himself. Surely John two nineteen to twenty one. Do you mind? Do you mind if I read it? Drew attention to his father. Didn't they? The scriptures say that quite clearly. Yes. Do, do you mind if I read it, sir? John. You can you can read that. Yeah. But I do have the Bible in front of me. Yep. John chapter two verse nineteen to twenty one. Jesus yep. answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. Verse 21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. So destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John 2.19. John 2.21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. So he prophesies right. here that he's going to rise up, in the very same body that he died in. That's surely why 1 Timothy 2.5 calls him the man Christ Jesus 30 years after his resurrection. Peter simply says he's made alive by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, yes, raises him from the, the grave. I think it's Acts, is it Acts 4.10? I'm working from memory here. I think the Father raised him from the dead, yeah. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. So the Father raised him from the dead, John chapter 4, verse 10. Holy Spirit raised him from the dead, 1 Peter 3, 18. And the Son, Jesus, raised, he raised his physical body from the, the, the grave. John chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Father is, but uh, you know we do know that Jesus always spoke about his Father as being greater than he is. Uh, well, that's we a that different sure. topic. Um, that's a different the, topic. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the whole thought behind it all has to be: Why did it happen? Who did he die for? In order for it to go into the heavens, so that he can sit beside his Father. That's the whole purpose behind why we look at what we do in connection with the resurrection of Jesus. But, but, it, you know, it, 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 we, yeah. We're not looking, you know, it's not, we're not, we're looking at the reasons for us, aren't we? The, the benefits that we get from what he did and why he was resurrected. You know, we know he was resurrected and we know he's, he's in heaven at the moment. What is a resurrection? Sorry? What is a resurrection? Well, that's when, it, when somebody dies and they're resurrected back to life, whether that be on the earth, as it has been in the past with some, or in the future for many, or whether that be someone who's resurrected into the uh, as a spirit body into the heavens. As Jesus but I've was. asked, but I've asked you to explain what a resurrection is, and you've used the word well, resurrection in your explanation, which isn't what, an explanation, which isn't an explanation. It's just repeating the term. Surely but resurrection he, means to stand up again. But, but the whole purpose, what is the purpose behind when somebody's resurrected? That's what we're trying to say. What's it for? What, why is someone resurrected to the heavens? We're looking at someone who becomes a, a spirit person, I, someone who's resurrected. You that said resurrected to the person. heavens. You need to show me that from the Bible. <laughs> you, you, you see, I asked you to explain what a resurrection was. And rather than explain it in simple language, you use the word resurrection in your explanation, which isn't an explanation. It's just repeating the terminology, which you're well, not defining. What is a resurrection? I thought the word resurrection means to stand up again. In other words, well, could, the very yeah. body you die in, you stand up well, again in that very same body. It's actually not words that we're talking about. It's, it's, it's the principle behind what the resurrection actually means it's the most important thing, right isn't it? what is the principle behind the resurrection well do you know why christ died 
and that's that's the benefit the whole of mankind. Right. That the Bible speaks of. Um, do you think it's possible from Luke twenty four? This is another verse that I've been looking at. Um, Jesus appeared to his disciples and they were frightened. Luke twenty four thirty seven says, but they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. I'm reading from the New King James. Okay, okay. So they thought that he was a spirit. And then in verse 39, he says to them, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broad fish and some honeycomb. And he took and ate it in their presence. Now, they thought he was a spirit. But he, to prove he isn't a spirit, because he said, firstly, a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see, I have. So he's saying he's not a spirit. And then he says, handle me and see. This is a parallel to John 20, 27, where Jesus says to Thomas, put your hand into my side and feel the marks of crucifixions on my hands and feet. And why would Jesus be resurrected in a non-human body? I presume you think this is a non-human body or, or what is it? I mean, you, you tell me. But why does Jesus' body here, after his resurrection, bear the marks of crucifixion if it's a different body? Surely you're saying he wasn't resurrected. Resurrection, the word resurrection means to stand up again, i.e. in the same body that you die in. You're saying he wasn't resurrected. You're saying he was recreated. When he appears to um, the disciples in Luke 24, 37 to 43, are you saying here that he resurrected as a spirit creature or was it a another second human body or was it the same oh, human body uh -huh. or what? What, 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 what? I mean, just explain it to me. What? What is this? Yeah, he was resurrected as a spirit creature in the same as he was before. He, he, I mean, he, he, was, he was the master worker, wasn't he, when the earth was created. So he was in spirit form before he came to earth. H how do you explain... And then in John yeah. three seventeen, it says, For God did not send his son into the world for him to judge the world, but for the world to be saved through... Him. So that's the whole purpose of why he died, so that he's, he could save us, the world, an opportunity to be able to have uh -huh. our sins forgiven. And you say that when he resurrected, it was as a spirit creature? Um, well, it was, yeah. It had to be. So in, in Matthew twenty four thirty nine, you're saying when he appears to his disciples, it is as a spirit, not as a human being? And then he came back down to his uh, appeared before his disciples that's correct so if he's a spirit creature why does he say in matthew 24 39 see this is what really troubles me sir behold my hands and my feet that he designed myself so this isn't a second body it's the same body he died in handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see i have he says he's flesh and bones and he says a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones but you see that i do have flesh and bones and then in john 20 27 jesus says to thomas we just go to that verse he actually tells him to actually physically put his hand into his side and um let's read it so i can read it accurately uh john 20 27 then he said to thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side do not be unbelieving but be believing right so he 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 says he has resurrected and the body of flesh and bones 
in Luke 24, 39, Behold my hands and my feet that he desire myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones. As you see, I have. And he's not only flesh and bones, but he's flesh and bones who has the marks of crucifixion in his body. John 20, 27. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. So his body has the marks of crucifixion. Now, why is that? Why would he rise up in a, you say, a spirit body? Why would a spirit body have the marks of crucifixion on it? Well, I, th I think actually what's happening here is, is it's difficult to explain things to you on the phone. What's your name, by the way? My name is Robert Skinner. Robert Skinner. OK. Well, then nice to meet you, Robert. Thank you. It's very difficult. And you are? I'm Ray. I'm Ray Purden. Ray what? Sorry, Ray Purden. Ray Purden. Nice to meet you, Ray. You too. It's, it's, it is difficult to explain over the phone because we could go around in circles. Well, I've, I've had no, no, no problem explaining the Bible over the phone. It's quite easy. Jesus, well, the word resurrection means to stand up again, and he stood up again in the same body that he died in. That's no, a resurrection. Yeah, I, I, he wasn't recreated in no, a second... Right. And it, you know, it, you've got to have the whole. We've got to have the whole reasons behind why Jesus died, uh, and we understand how we fit into that. So and, it's like rather like a tight-fitting shoe. And all that, but but this, this is something that, that when we look at what Jesus actually did and what his father did for him, we've got to understand the whole purpose. You know, Jehovah God, his father. We've got to discuss the whole reasons and the whole purpose behind why he did what he did in order to get the whole context of what we're, what we're saying. So it's a bit like a tight-fitting shoe. You need a, a good shoe horn to help force yeah, your you foot into the shoe, to make the shoe fit your foot. You need to understand the whole picture in order to understand mm. the other parts of it. So we could go around in circles and, and pick up parts of the Bible we need the whole context, the whole picture. Right. Um, um, but it's nice of you to, it's nice of you to, yeah. to phone, yeah. and we do appreciate it very much. Um, at this moment, I'm, I'm a, unable to sort of uh, commit any much more time, I'm afraid, on the yes, phone. Yes, of, of course, um, of course. Do you, do you want to take my it. telephone number? Do you want to take my telephone number so you can contact me some other time? Because there's another question from the Really Teach yeah. book about the year 1919, which I'm very interested in. Do you want me to give okay. you my phone number uh, for the right. pen? Okay. Yeah. What was your, your name, Robert? Robert Skinner. And thank you very much, Ray, for your, your help. I, I'm That's extremely cool. grateful to you. Please do not voicemail me, but if you text me when you want to speak to me, I'm also interested in the year 1919. Okay, well, it, you know, obviously we're, we're, we do discuss things, but we don't take things out of context, Robert. We, we, when we discuss things, we like, we like to um, you know, make sure everything's in context with what the Bible's saying, and sometimes years aren't important. Um, well, it is because your literature says that Jesus cleansed and chose the Watchtower Society in the year 1919. If you look at our website, you'll see some more information. I don't have access to the internet until until the library the opens. Well, I don't I don't have the internet at home. I I can't go on the internet. internet. No, okay, but, but when the library is open, I can go on the internet, and your yeah. literature says that Jesus did an inspection and a cleansing work yeah. between the years 1914 and 1919, and he chose the yeah. Watchtower Society in 1919. It doesn't have to be you. It could be somebody else at Whitby who maybe phones me up and helps me with that, if that's possible. Well, I think you'll find any one of us, we don't take one part of the Bible uh, and just or, or, or one part of a year, even to be honest with you, we, we we look at the whole picture. That's what that's what we like to do. So any discussions that, that any discussions that we, we we have, we like we like to take the Bible and a publication that we have and use it alongside the Bibles to give us some some definite uh, 
answers to, to, to what we're, we're, we're discussing. We don't look at years, really, to be honest with you. Well, you do, um, because you claim that, that Jesus did an inspection and a cleansing work between 1914 and 1919. That's correct. Yeah, yes, that correct. so that's, an that's uh, July 2013 Watchtower. I think it's pages 9 yeah, to 14. That's right, yeah, that's right, based on Revelation. Right. So if someone could help with that, it doesn't have to be you, but someone could maybe help talk me through that. That would be appreciated. Right. OK. You well, can I pass mean, my well, details on to whoever you like, someone who would I mean, be an expert well, in well, that. It, the same answer would come from them as it was from me, to be honest. Yes, but, but, but some people have more knowledge than other people. Someone who's been a, a someone who was baptized last week might not know as much as somebody who is a, an elder who's been an elder for 30 years. Oh, please, 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 I just, please, we don't need to argue about that. I'm just looking for help. If somebody could get back to me, someone who knows the Bible, who could help me, I would be ever so okay, grateful, thank Ray. Thank you. Thank you. For your thank you, Ray. Thank and you, thank you for your bye trouble. Bye. Thank you, Ray. Bye-bye, Ray. Bye.